Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and welcome to a quick impromptu tutorial about UV mapping in Blender. Now, I've actually covered this twice on Game From Scratch. I've covered it in this the Game Art tutorial, which is a large text-based tutorial covering all facets of working in Blender. You can see here in texturing, I cover creating UV map, UV unwrapping, and applying a texture. And here later on, I also did a series of one-hour videos on using Blender, including one hour on materials, texturing, UV maps. Now what I never actually did was show the process of how to do so. And I need to actually go through and UV map something myself. So I figured I'd throw on the uh, video recorder uh, and actually document the process. Now first up, two warnings. First, I hate UV unwrapping. I hate it. I hate the process. I'm very lazy about it. Um, and so yeah. And second, I'm not particularly great at it. So you can see my workflow, but my workflow may not be the best workflow you've ever seen. So be aware of those two things up front, but I do figure there is some value in showing how I UV unwrap stuff because this is something we all need to learn if you're going to work in 3D, and it's one of probably the most confusing things you need to learn. And in reality, it's actually a fairly simple process behind the scenes. So in this process, I am going to assume you already know how to use Blender. I'm not going to talk about what shortcut keys I used or how I resize the windows or any of that stuff. I assume you know how to use Blender. It's just UV mapping we're going to cover. And this is the shape we're going to cover. It's a, it's a 2D building, sorry, 3D building from uh, the Mech Commander 2 assets pack. Uh, it's a very simple model. You can see it, it's um, triangulated like you all often see in game engines. And now what we just need to do is apply a texture to it. There's no UV map right now. If I come in here, uh, let's bring up UV editor, UV image editor. So, oh, that's leftover. So first things first, let's do an unwrap. And in order to unwrap, you have to be in edit mode. You select all of your edges or polygons or vertices or whatever, and then do an unwrap. And it takes it and it tries to flatten your object out. And that's what a UV map is. If the word UV edit or UV map or UV editing might not make immediate sense to you, it's scarier sounding than it is. UV is just X and Y coordinates. It's the way of saying, um, how, here's how you take a flat 2D image and map it to a 3D object. And it's actually kind of the inverse, because what you're doing is you're taking the 3D object and flattening it out. And then you're sort of you putting your texture on top of it like a sticker. So UV is literally just like X, Y, and Z. It's just X, Y, and Z have already been used, so the U and V are two new variable values. And the U represents the left to right value from zero to one. V represents the value from um, up to bottom, or bottom to top, again, zero to one. So it's just another set of coordinates. There's nothing magical about UV. It's just like you talk with X and Y, or Z when you're dealing with uh, locations. UV is a set of 2D coordinates when you're dealing with textures. Nothing really magical about it. So here on your UV map, this is 0, 0, or this is 0, 0, depending on your implementation. And this is 1, 1. So any location on this 2D grid otherwise has a different UV value. So that's all UV stands for. So don't, don't get scared by that. And the process is actually quite simple too. What you're doing is basically telling Blender how you're going to cut this model up to make it flat. So picture, if you will, that this model over here was a piece of paper, like it was a paper model in 3D in front of you. And you had a pair of scissors and you had to take it with a minimum number of cuts possible and flatten it out. And the really cool thing is with this particular shape, we don't really need to worry about seams because every seam is a 90 degree angle and it's going to be a new image at each scene. So we can just do straight cuts. And what we're, we're literally going to do is cut this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy, and then leave the roof on its own. I'm not gonna worry about this wrap right here. You could also cut each corner. Actually, I might do that. So um, what we need to do then is define and tell it how to cut each corner to flatten it out. So let's do that right now. Switch over here to edge mode. Oops, edge mode. And then what I wanna do is I wanna cut like so. So then when we're done, we've got a piece of paper. We basically will end up with this rectangle on flat, which is perfect, exactly what we want. We want this rectangle to be flat, and this one to be flat, and this one to be flat. Now this is really easy in this particular example because I'm dealing with a square surface. If you're dealing with a head, um, the UV seam where two UVs come together is probably the most tricky part of actual UV unwrapping when you get into it. And what you often want to do is try and hide it. So then you do your cuts at say the back of the head or around in behind the ear if you're working on a, on a head obviously. So you just want to hide the UV seams, make them less prevalent as possible. But in this case, since everything is at 90 degree angles, 
you can UV scene the heck out of it. It doesn't really matter because there's no seam, there's no transition between these two locations. So that we're basically saying, so to cut each one of these into a separate rectangle. And once you've defined them all, just go ahead and mark them. Mark seam here under UV mapping, and now you've seen they've turned red. So each one of these is now the scenes where we're going to make our incisions or our cuts. So now if I select everything, and it's important, you gotta select the faces when you're doing a UV unwrap. So select everything, and then click unwrap. And now you'll see the results much, much different. So these are each one of our rectangles are independent. And then here is our roof as it's defined. So now I'm gonna actually make cuts so our roof comes up a little bit easier to work with too. And we're just gonna do an edge here, an edge here, an edge here, an edge there. And that just flattens the shape down a little bit more, makes it easier to apply a texture onto it. So all of our edge is done. We're gonna mark and then we'll do, oops, select everything and then do an unwrap again. And see now we got much cleaner, much more squared lines. We have our edges going right here, right there for each one of those corners. Clean, we're, we're basically now UV unwrap this shape. Now I picked one of the easiest UV shapes in the entire universe to work with. So when you start dealing with things that are more complex, have a more complicated transition, that's when you're gonna start needing much more advanced techniques than what I'm covering here. I just wanna cover the process this time. So now that we've got our shape unwrapped, what we're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and have it um, have a material or a texture to apply it to. So come in here, apply a material to your guy. Uh, I am using this texture right over here. Uh, we're gonna use UV mapping like so, and everything there is good. Now one thing else I'm gonna do for Blender is by default, it does all this shading in the surface. I don't actually want any shading. I wanna see exactly how my model looks without any lighting effect. And that's just click on Shadeless right there. Okay, so we now have our very, very, very ugly shader applied. Um, and let's bring it up in the image editor over here, like so. And turn on texturing. And now you can see the end result. So right now we've got a set of doors in our roof. Um, we've got, yeah, a bunch of gibberish going on. And we don't really want any of that. So what we're gonna do, and this is how I generally start when I'm texturing to an image, is I grab everything in the UV editor and I move it off. And I don't know why it keeps staying over. It shouldn't be. So this is tiling or something on me. All right, it's annoying. This should actually be clear because none of these textures are over the image. So there's something weird going on with my, with my image. Something weird going on with my image in general because it looks nothing like that. It looks exactly like that. So uh, one sec. All right, I'm not entirely certain what's up, but we can pretty much ignore it for now. Uh, so let's just go back to applying this guy. Oh, so I got a bunch of crap open here in a sec. Okay, so now we gotta deal with, basically we gotta take our selected shapes and apply them to our image. And really that's it, and then we're done. Now, what you'll notice over here though, so I select something, it's staying selected. And that's because of the mode I'm in. And this is a very handy way to work, especially if you want to grab islands. However, if I switch this over to, if I grab a single guy over here, you'll notice everything went away, except for what I have selected. So, see, you're only getting the actual shapes that I have selected shown. So there's another mode. So again, select everything, you can see everything. And again, the cool thing about being in this mode is this guy right here, which allows you to select islands, which is groups of UVs that are independent. These are the pieces that we've cut apart. So we can grab them and move them all independently, which we're gonna use quite a bit in a second. Now, sometimes though, you're gonna to wanna to work at a fine detail level, and this going away every time you select an individual like this, if I select just that face, everything gone, it's gonna be a very annoying pose. So there's also this guy right here, which says keep UV in edit mode in sync. And you'll notice now you can't select um, the uh, UV islands anymore. So it's a bit of a turn, a trade off which one you're gonna go. You're gonna to probably talk, toggle back and forth between those. Uh, enough that um, you should probably get used to it. But when you're in this mode now, you can select, uh, let's go over here to face mode, and everything you select, it's gonna, the corresponding UV over here is gonna show up. And then vice versa, you can select a face here, 
and you can see where it's affecting there. So between those two modes, you're gonna you're gonna want to toggle back and forth depending on what you're trying to do. But in this case, we'll stay with this mode. And what I want to do now is just take each face. So this is we'll call it the back of the house. We need to apply the back of the house to this texture right here. And just grab it and bring it down. Scale it upish. Now I'm not I'm not gonna bother showing you huge amounts of precision here because well that's painfully boring. Uh, but there, you know, you've applied it. Well, you might notice I'm actually uh, upside down. So rotate one, oops, that was a nine. Rotate Y, 180, and there. So now we've just applied this texture to that face. And you just kind of keep continuing. So uh, let's grab that face instead. You'll see it is this selection. And we'll, we'll apply it to this face right here. So let's rotate it. I have no idea if I'm rotating in the right direction, by the way, but. And your, uh, your manipulation keys are exact same as normal Blender. So scale is S, rotate is G. But you also can grab uh, components. So let's do switch to vertices. And you can move vertex independently, etc. Again, I'm just going to hack through this very, very, very fast. Uh, but you kind of get the idea. We're just going to grab, um, let's go back to face mode, grab each guy you want. Uh, bring it over, apply it however it makes sense to be applied, and done. So now we've got that shape applied. Uh, no idea what I'm going to texture. I guess I'll reuse this shape right here. So let's grab that guy. You'll see it's over here. So let's rotate that. Drag it over. Oh, no, we don't need another door. We need this guy. Uh, remember, you can hold shift to do a slightly more precise version of, so if you need to rotate a little bit more accurately, you can hold down the shift key and it'll rotate at a slower speed. Good enough. Uh, scale Y, this guy big. Uh, I think that's upside down again. Take 180. So now we got another window going on. Um, I don't know where to put this guy. Yeah, we'll just, there, works for me. And uh, this is our back wall over here. We'll just rotate, bring it in. So this house has a lot of doors, apparently, actually. Let's do this one, it makes more sense. Scale, oops, good enough. And rotate Y, 180. So there you go, we have a textured house. Now we just need to deal with this roof. Uh, here, I'll do the roof using the other modes. So we turn the mode off, come back here, select everything, go into island mode, and then you get all of these instead. Um, let's rotate Y 180. Oh, no, rotate Y 90. Over to our roof area, scale that down, and done. That's it. That is UV mapping um, in Blender. Now, of course, you're gonna want a hell of a lot more precision. My texture doesn't make a particular lot of sense. As you saw, we can actually overlap UVs to use the same source material. Um, but that is a UV mapped house and done. Now, again, what you do run into a little bit more trick down the road is when you're dealing with um, uh, seams. So that's something if, if you want, I can do a, a tutorial on it later, but chances are I'm not the right guy to do that because as I said earlier, I hate doing this stuff. Uh, but that is UV mapping in Blender. You can see we've created this shape from this texture, fairly low res, but let's see if I've got a camera. There you go. Um, we're dealing with textures from a 10 year old game. So they're not the highest fidelity. You would normally deal much, 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 much higher resolution textures. But as you can see there, uh, let's hear let's lock camera, view, camera. So your end result is a textured, um, very fuzzy, very blurry, very 90s-esque house model. And done. I hope you enjoyed that. See you later. Bye.